Hi, in this video, I'm going to quickly go through some of the alarm options on your Dawa NVR. Right over here, I have the 4116 NVR. It doesn't have any alarm inputs or outputs on this NVR. So the first thing is make sure your NVR comes with the alarm input and alarm output functions. This is usually present on the larger NVRs. For example, this is the 4216, which takes two hard drives. Now, the purpose of the alarm input and output is to give your NVR additional security features. For example, over here, it says NO1 and C1. That means that you can connect devices to your NVR, which can be controlled from any activity that takes place on the NVR in terms of the cameras. For example, if there's motion in front of the camera, for example, if you've set your camera for alarm motion detection and it detects motion, you can tell the NVR to close these relay contacts. The reason for that is maybe you want to activate a siren. Switch on a floodlight. or even connect to your home or office alarm system. Here I have an alarm panel and you can connect your NVR as a zone on your alarm system. That means that if there is an intruder and they are in the way of the camera, an alarm condition gets reported on your NVR, which, which then is connected to your alarm system and your alarm system can then activate to the reaction to your private security company or even send you a message on your mobile phone if you've got that type of alarm system. Therefore, using the relay contacts which are on board here, you can control a variety of devices because inside your NVR, you have a small relay and a relay is a magnetically controlled switch. So that means you can configure your NVR to switch something on or switch something off based on an alarm condition. Now the alarm conditions that you can set on your NVR consist of motion detection, you can set tripwire, you can even use PIR, but that is camera dependent. So just because you have the NVR does not mean you're going to have all the intelligent video surveillance options that is also dependent on the type of camera you have. However, on the basic NVRs, you automatically get the motion detection alarm, which means that if there is motion in front of your camera, you can set it to close the relay contacts. Now, also on your NVR are alarm inputs. For example, it says there are one, two, three, four. So on this NVR, I have four alarm inputs, which means that you can connect devices to your NVR and let your NVR act as either a relay station or a reporting center for your alarm system. So over here, I have a passive infrared detector. You could wire this into your NVR, and when there is motion detected in the front of this passive infrared detector, your NVR can be set up to either send you an email, to record a certain channel, for example. So that is quite useful if you've got a beam and somebody moves past the beam, you can tell the NVR to record on a certain channel after the alarm input took place. Now, when you power up your NVR and you go to the main menu, you'll see you have a menu just for alarms. Now, the NVR logs all the alarms for you, and you can even set to that a pop-up window comes up when an alarm is triggered. At any point in time, you can see the alarm status. Now, you have the tab here which says alarm input. Now, you can configure the alarm inputs on your NVR. So earlier I said I have four alarm inputs on my particular NVR. So on each alarm input, you can set certain parameters. Firstly, you can set when that alarm will be recorded. For example, if you've got an office where you do not want the people walking inside the office to be setting off an alarm, you can disable certain days and certain times, maybe during office hours, so that no alarm is reported during those times. You can then also set the alarm output right here at the alarm input. And the reason being is if an alarm input takes place, maybe someone walked past the beam, the alarm would be recorded, but you can also let it control the output of that relay, which means maybe you have a siren that goes off or a floodlight or a strobe. So this means you are using your NVR as a type of relay station. 
the alarm input gets recorded on your NVR and then you set the relay and you'll connect your device to provide a certain action as the alarm output. I have a detailed video explaining practically how to connect these devices to your NVR. In this video, I'm just briefly going through the features. Now it has the option to show the message. You can even upload the alarm then you can record a certain channel. So if you have many cameras connected, you can set which camera to record. In this case, I only have one camera connected to this NVR. So say for example, I had the passive infrared detector and it was activated. Somebody was inside the factory when they shouldn't have been. I can then tell the NVR to record a variety of channels. And I can also tell the NVR for how long to record. And I can also set a PTZ rule and then you can even set the little buzzer that is inside the NVR to make a sound. If your security guard is sitting in the surveillance room, then he or she will be notified by the buzzer on the NVR. I'll still play that sound for you shortly. And this is an example of the buzzer. You can also set it that it sends you an email and you can set it that it saves a picture according to whichever camera channels you set. Now on the video detection as an alarm, that means you can decide which camera you want to set as a video detecting alarm. You'll obviously have to enable it, then you'll set the region. So right now my camera is facing the ceiling and if you only wanted it to be able to detect in this corner, then even though I'm moving my finger in front of the camera, it won't sound the alarm because I'm not in the red zone. Only when I go over the red zone will the alarm be triggered. Here's an example of the buzzer. You can then also set the period for when this alarm motion detection may operate. And then you can set the alarm output. This means that if there was motion in front of the camera, earlier I said you could switch on a siren, switch on a floodlight. Well, there's the setting. You will enable either relay one or relay two or both, or maybe you've got relay three or four on a larger NVR. Then you can also tell it to record additional channels if you want to. So that means that just because motion was detected on camera one, you can then set it to record all the cameras maybe that are outside, for example. You can also set a PTZ activation and then the buzzer as I've just demonstrated the sound. You can also let it send you an email and then you can also set for how long you want that relay or that siren or that light to be activated for. You can also set audio detection as part of an alarm, but this would depend on the type of camera you've got. So if there's audible sounds, then you can also do the same with the alarm output, etc. Record the channel PTZ. And then depending on the type of camera you've got and the NVR you've got, you can set your intelligent video surveillance where you can make rules for tripwires, etc., which can also be set to control alarm outputs. Right, so there is a quick overview of the alarm features on your NVR. For practical demonstrations of how to connect your alarm inputs and alarm outputs, please check out my playlist on Dower videos. Thanks for watching and cheers.